You're watching a production of South Dakota Public Broadcasting. We're going on a field trip into South Dakota's past, and the first thing every traveler needs to know about our state is, it's big. 400 miles east to west, and more than 200 north to south. So, South Dakotans have always put imagination and hard work into getting from one place to another. We're proud of our pickups, cars, and motorcycles. but nothing on wheels made a bigger difference in the state's history than the locomotive. Trains in the state of South Dakota grew up together. In the late 1800s, Americans in most of the country were linking their towns by rails. Things were different in Dakota. There weren't yet many towns to link, but wherever rails were built, new towns and farms sprang up. In those days, people could get free farms by paying a filing fee living on a piece of land, planting crops, and putting up some buildings. Railroads knew they'd make money taking settlers called homesteaders to the farmland of Dakota, and even more money as towns were built along the tracks. Trains moved people, hauled cattle, grain, and machinery, all products to build the new Dakota Territory. In eastern South Dakota, great silos were built along the tracks to store the grain until the trains came to haul it to the markets in the east. In the Black Hills, small underground locomotives carried gold ore out of the vast home state mine. In the 1890s, great cattle drives moved herds to Belfouche, one of the world's busiest cattle towns. Trains delivered lumber for building towns, mail, store merchandise, catalog orders, famous visitors, and even the circus. Trains were fast compared to transportation used by earlier settlers. Those people came up the Missouri River on steamboats or across Iowa and Minnesota in covered wagons. Hamlin Garland, one of South Dakota's first authors, was impressed by how trains felt modern compared to wagons. I bought a ticket for Aberdeen and entered the train crammed with movers who had found the prairie schooner all too slow. 
the era of the locomotive, the day of the chartered car had arrived. Two big railroad companies raced each other to be the first to build tracks from the eastern edge of the state clear to the Black Hills. It was the slowest race imaginable. In the 1880s, the two companies reached the Missouri River. About 20 years later, they continued west from the river after great bridges went up. The Northwestern Railroad ran tracks through Huron over the river at Pier and first rolled a train into Rapid City during the summer of 1907. The Milwaukee Railroad reached Rapid three weeks later. Its tracks ran through Sioux Falls, Mitchell, crossed the river at Chamberlain, and passed the Badlands on the way to the Black Hills. These weren't the first trains to reach the Black Hills. Those came out of the south, from Nebraska. But 1907 was the first year people could sit in a train car and make the 400-mile trip across this wide state of ours, much as we do today in our automobiles. Not everyone loved trains. Some American Indian leaders worried trains would bring so many settlers that Indian country would change forever. There was reason to worry. In the early 1900s, the United States government opened up 700,000 acres of reservation land for settlement by outsiders. The present-day little town of Dallas, South Dakota, once had 15 trains a day stopping here, bringing settlers who wanted Rosebud Reservation land. Before reservations, American Indian people of South Dakota were great travelers, able to pack up entire villages in just a few hours and move them to better hunting lands or to places protected from winter winds. In the 1800s, settlers sometimes used the Indian routes for freight wagon and stagecoach roads. In western South Dakota, there are spots where you can still see ruts made by horse, oxen, and mule-drawn wagons. Just a few years later, in the early 1900s, some wagon roads were built up and covered with gravel, all for an amazing new invention, the automobile. Who could have guessed that cars would become more popular than the great locomotives? At a time when trains ruled travel, the first cars often overheated, got flat tires, and bogged down in mud and snow. But people loved them anyway. And cars got better, and better, and better. So did Rhodes. A state highway commission was formed in 1917, meaning government was going to take responsibility for roads. In the 1920s, the state came up with money to build five bridges across the Missouri River. In 1923, people hopped into their cars to see something incredible between Del Rapids and Sioux Falls. Instead of dirt or gravel, 
The road between those towns was hard concrete, a first for South Dakota. That year of 1923 had South Dakotans owning more than 120,000 cars and more than 10,000 trucks. More and more farmers used trucks to take their crops and livestock to market. South Dakota's early tourists usually came by train. But as cars and roads improved, more visitors drove themselves to South Dakota. The 1930s saw one of the world's most impressive roads built in the Black Hills. United States Senator Peter Norbeck walked a route some experts thought impossible for building roads, let alone a road that would show off the newly built Mount Rushmore. But the Iron Mountain Road became a reality. Four presidents inspired the Iron Mountain Road, Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln. Another one, President Dwight Eisenhower, brought about South Dakota's busiest highways. Eisenhower, a general in World War II, thought the country needed straight, extra-wide highways going clear across the United States so military equipment could be moved quickly in wartime. The rest of the time, the president said, Americans could enjoy driving these super highways. Today, we call them interstates. There are two in South Dakota. How important have interstate highways been? Built mainly in the 1960s and 1970s, most South Dakota towns that have grown have been located next to the interstates. It's a lot like the railroad years when towns grew along the rails. Speaking of rails, trains didn't disappear because of cars and trucks. In the late 1900s, it looked like they might. But in 1986, the Dakota, Minnesota, and Eastern Railroad was formed to haul coal from Wyoming, as well as South Dakota farm goods, on fast trains. Some people believed the new railroad would be good for South Dakota. Some said the extra fast trains would be too noisy and dangerous. Good roads take travelers everywhere in South Dakota these days. They're used by people for fun and for business, and for exploring the state to understand it better. See you on the road. For additional information, a teacher's guide, games, quizzes, and more, log on to dakotapathways.org.